Musicians in bars getting beer. I'm eavesdropping on the classic albums live guys at the Roy Thompson patio. So we've got Greg Wired. Hi there. Hi. And uh, Chris, sorry, your last name? No, it's Marty. Marty Morin. I'm sorry, Marty. Yeah, I'm playing drums today. And you're Chris. I'm Chris. I'm the I, I'm director of programming here at the hall, so I'm oh, not right part on. of the band. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll get the camera off you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys want to tell me what you're up to today? Well, we're uh, part of a group called Classic Albums Live, and we're playing uh, in the patio of Roy Thompson Hall. This is something new they started this year, and they're having these uh, sort of mini concerts after work. Um, I think the first set starts at around 6.30, 7 o'clock, something like yeah. that. And um, yeah, so it's uh, something they seem to be, uh, uh, well, it, it looks like it's succeeding. They're getting a good number of people here, so it's great. Yeah. Marty, you're a drummer, and Greg, you're a bass player. I'm a bass player for this show, but I play guitar as well. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so this is the Beatles show? Yes, we're doing pretty much a career spanning set, starting with the early stuff, ending with the late stuff. Right. So, and who else uh, in this band? Not that I didn't notice already. I saw Michael. Well, we have William Hare on piano. Uh, we have Mike Bassis on guitar and Don, Don Polito. Polito, also Don on, Polito guitar. on guitar. He's usually, usually known oh, from the too. I couldn't see him from usually known for the Led Zeppelin shows. But, uh, he's uh, picked up some Beatles now, so it's uh, it's going great. Cool. You want to tell me about uh, any other recordings that you do? That I personally have done? Sure. Um, well, I could go into my own career, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> promote myself. Uh, I, I've just put a CD out uh, called Encore about a year ago. Which was actually, I used a lot of the guys from Classic Albums Live to uh, pre present the show at, at uh, Hughes Room about a year ago. i got to say, that's one so, of the nicest things about working with Classic Albums Live. It's the, the network of musicians that you start to work, absolutely. you know, you find. And as we're expanding and going into different cities, you get different circles of musicians that you meet and stuff, you know, because we hire a lot of local players like string players and horns and things like that. And, you know, with musicians, once you meet one musician, you've met 10, you know, because they just keep bringing guys around. So over the years now, which is, I think we've been doing it for a little more than 13 years now, we've run across some really great players, you know, guys that, guys that would pay us to play, you know, like, right, you know, awesome. like, and so it, that's been a, a real rewarding experience, I got to say. How do you get on the roster? How do you audition to be... Well, you know what? I mean, I was one of the original guys back when we first started it out, but uh, there's guys coming to us all the time wanting to play. But it's funny, too, because, you know, you get these guys that are real hot shots on the guitar, and they, they can really, you know, play a million notes a minute. But we want guys that can play the guitar solo in nowhere, man, you know? Yeah. And we, you know, we get guys that have the same tubes in their amplifiers that the Beatles used, and the same, they hunt for the same strings, and... All that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's to be a little bit of fanaticism about the music. First yeah. of all, I think that's that's how I, I actually got started because I read about in the newspaper, uh, 2004, no, three, 2003, some guy called Craig Martin was putting on this White Album show, and I thought I could do that. Like I know the whole album backwards, you know. Like I've got to be on this show, and I and I just went out of my way to email him. You know, I hounded him a few times. I went to a rehearsal, and then I, it was just sort of sheer determination that I, I I just wanted to play on the show. I didn't really care if I did anything past that, but yeah, I was how, often, how often do you get to play the entire White Album show in front of an audience, you know, without having to get all these weird sound effects and, you know, so I thought this was going to be great, and it turned into a multi-year thing. Yeah, know? I interviewed Troy Fiener in not too long ago at Massey Hall, and he said something about, uh, some, there was some accidental uh, noise on one of the tracks. And oh, we play all the mistakes. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. the trick of it. Like we, you know, especially with the Beatles and early in the career, I mean, they were going so quickly that a lot of times they, they made the mistakes and just kept it in. One guy would push the beat and the other guy would stay straight. And we really take pains to, to learn how to do that, you know. Um, remember one time we did years ago, we decided to uh, put on a concert. We played every Beatles song ever recorded in, at one go. It was a, how long was that concert? It was, it was December 2006. So yeah, and it was brutal. 13 yeah. hours. Yeah. 13 hour and concert. We, and I actually got physically ill. Yes. Was, <laughs> we did a show. It was, it was like, I think, 10 hours into the show. Oh I was, gosh. you know, literally, I had to leave the stage for us, you know. And I came yeah, well, he was doing a lot of singing. I was on that show too, but I'll tell you, at the end, I could have gone for more. We started with the very first song, which was... Uh, I want to hold your hand. No, no, no. Um, so like standing me do. I saw her so standing there. Oh, I saw, yeah. First, yeah. It was track by track by album, so please, please. So it starts with that one, to two, the end three, of Let It Be. And the last song is uh, Get Back. Yeah, right. And we even did the German versions of She Loves You and I Want to Hold Your Hand, Could Give Me Dinah Hall, yeah. and all that. We went through, uh, yeah, but that was a lot of fun. And, do, and what about net this year? Do you, what, can you talk a little bit about what you guys are doing? This well, year? yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of stuff coming up this year. Uh, hello. Hi. Ask him anything. I'm just recording. <laughs> you know, it's been nice over the last few years. Uh, Massey Hall and Roy Thompson Hall have been uh, 
uh, booking our group uh, four times a year, and it's become kind of a tradition for us. This has been happening the last four or five years now, and um, it's just so wonderful to be able to play in your own city. Uh, and uh, this year we got quite a bit uh, happening. We've got on uh, November 21st, I think it's the Led Zeppelin One album that's coming in. Led Zeppelin One, and then on uh, February, where is it? Here? Oh yeah, February 19th. Uh, we're doing the Help album and Rubber. Is it just Help? Just Help. Yeah, and we're doing that here at Roy Thompson Hall. Is this the Roy Thompson program? Yes, yes it is. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Work. Okay. yeah. Awesome. And then we've got. I'll, I'll um, to it. Okay. We got our usual. We always try to put a Pink Floyd show in every year, and this year it's going to be Animals, and I believe that's in April. And then uh, finally, Bowie. Yeah, we got the Bowie show, yeah. which surprisingly, uh, it's 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 mostly made up of women in the show. There's a, I think there's three or four women in, in the band, and it's. Uh, Tried it out a couple uh, last year and it worked gangbusters. How do you get all the animal noises on animals with the pigs? Oh, the... Uh, you know, a lot of that stuff we got to get sampled. I mean, we obviously can't bring pigs. To Although we did try to bring a dog. <laughs> on yeah. 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 Yes, <laughs> and it didn't work. Yeah, it would not yeah. Yeah, 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 a lot of times I end up doing that being the percussionist on a lot of the shows, but we don't just lift them off the record. Like I, I hire a sound effects guy and we go through literally hours of door knocks and plane crashings and all this kind of stuff to come up with these sounds. And, uh, yeah, and this is your sound guy here. He's, he's the guy that makes Yeah, sure so you got to program that stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's what we do. I mean, there are times, you know, like in Pink Floyd, we'll all have alarm clocks or things like that, but, you know can't afford to bring in a real helicopter yet yeah. so you know so I got that sound built in so it's good I think they did that over there across the street once yeah, just like on oh yes I saw that yeah, yeah. I saw that how are you good how are you doing good good have you got any questions you want to ask yeah I do um, thank you very much wait I have a bucket list okay. uh, for uh, bands that I'd like to cover oh, and I'm and wondering if you have thought about doing Crosby Stills we have. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. That. Yeah, yeah, I did that show. I did that show. We did that. Uh, we did Deja Vu. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna and do that again. It yeah, it was a great show. It turned yeah. out great. Okay, then I missed that. One. We yeah, did it. We only, we only did, did it for the Florida. American market. That's right. We well, never that's the problem. Yeah. A lot of the good stuff is done. And the, the cool thing that happened is one of the theaters that we played at, the, the main house sound man, was the monitor guy for uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash. Like whenever they went on yeah. and he said you guys were easily as good, you know. So it, it was oh, no, a real no. compliment. No so sorry I missed that one. But my next uh, wish is the police. Oh, that we, we've done that as well. We've done uh, Zenyatta, uh, Zenyatta. Yeah. We've done it. Okay. Yeah, we did two albums. Uh, the first two records, I think, that they did. We tried a new series. Uh, remember, they, we tried that series at the Phoenix for a while. More contemporary yeah. sort of classics or something. Or? Yeah, we were doing Soundgarden and you know and bands like that, and the Police was included but, in that. But these aren't the recurrent shows. You're not no. doing them all the time. No, it's sort of been a few like shows like that. Like we did Radiohead, OK, okay. Computer. Yeah. We did that only a couple of times. Turned out great, but we haven't been able to do it again. So you know, we go where the uh, where they ask us. Yeah, yeah. And and the huge the they, yeah. It's funny too because certain albums, like we say, have. Been, a lot of links, yeah. you know, like they uh, they last a long time. Abbey Road gets booked years and years in advance, and then there's others that are a bit of a niche, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you got to see that. But, uh, you mentioned the Moody Blues a couple of weeks ago. We played here at Roy Thompson Hall. The uh, the CEO, uh, uh, president of um, Roy Thompson Hall, Massey Hall, Chuck, um, was uh, retiring, and so they had a big retirement party, and they specifically asked us to learn. Some moody blue stuff for him. You know, yeah, so. no, I know he's a big fan. I remember yes, yeah, he's a big saying, fan. Yeah. All of you guys read music? Not all of us. No, I'd say most. Have, most of us. It, it certainly helps with uh, speed, getting getting through rehearsals because if you've got, you know, if everything's by ear. You've got to memorize everything, and, yeah. and you can't convey it to other people. Yeah. So I'd say that it certainly is a big skill that helps. But, yeah, um, not everybody does, but everybody has their own way, way of doing it. You yeah. know, like I'm a, I'm a percussionist, so generally. I don't have traditional sheet music. Like I make my own charts, and I use, you know, signs. I've, I've watched like you that. in many different ways, but many rare pieces. So. Yeah, so you have to, you know, it's again, it's not like traditional music. You know, I use symbols and icons and little things like that. Yeah. But you got to have something because it's pretty hard to remember it all. You know. Yeah, it's just the sheer volume of material. You know, yeah. you, ha you got to have yeah. something written down. How long does it typically take to pick up an album? Uh, I say, depend? Depends on the record. Too. I say the Queen album. You are with it. <laughs> I say what? Queen Night of the Opera. Month. 
Yeah, know, like eight, eight or nine rehearsals. But then yeah. other shows like uh, a Beat, maybe a Beatles show, maybe a few weeks. Like you know. Sergeant Pepper. Yeah, yeah and, that, that was no, intricate, yeah. And, and again, Sergeant Pepper, like a lot of these records, we learned years and years ago. You know, so we don't have to rehearse them anymore unless we've got a couple of new guys in the band, then we have to sort of go through the stuff with them. You know, but um, yeah, there was kind of a hump at the beginning, getting through the yeah, learning, getting through the then, initial. 20 or 30 Once you albums. do it a few times, it's, it's there, right? So, so it's like, you got to schedule out in the next year, I think. Oh, at least a couple of years, yeah. Years. Yeah, they, they book it pretty far in advance. Yeah. yeah. So I really love you. Well, thank you, you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for thank coming you. out. Thank you. Thanks for yeah. coming out, John. Wow, well, so uh, do you want to tell me about some of the other people that you've worked with on uh, the solo or? Oh, well, um, well, Will, Will Hare, um, Trofina, and uh, Ed, actually. Bernard, actually, yeah, Ed Bernard doesn't actually play with Classic Arms Live, but he's plays with those guys all the time. Yeah, the truck farming boys. I've, yeah, I've truck got all boys. of them on this show. Four out of five of them in the first season, and I finally got Troy this year. Oh, okay. So, uh... Oh, right. I think I saw that one, too. Yeah. yeah I, that was I, down um, in, the, in the bowels of uh, Massey. Yeah. Didn't you do something on the steps where the Rush album was shot or something? Or, and I, well, I, I just did some weird stuff there myself. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> um, also, Alex, Alex McMaster, uh, she, she played on the, on the show, she, she plays cello, and Amanda Penner as well, so, so a lot of those people I, I've worked with. So it's just great because I've, I've done several shows already with them, doing the Beatles shows, so I sort of knew, knew what, how, how to write parts for them and you know, what was going to work, so it was great. And do you have any more solo shows lined up? Um, not, actually, I'm playing at the X. Uh, 29th and 30th of, cool. this, of August. Midway stage? Uh, midway stage, yeah. Right. Uh, 3 to 6 in the afternoon and evening cool. with, uh, with Troy and Ed and a, a piano player. And what kind of stuff will you be doing with that? It's going to be my own, my own stuff right. and then some, some classic rock tunes, probably some Peter Gabriel, the Beatles, awesome. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I imagine you see the Peter Gabriel stuff really well, too. Yeah, yeah I particularly like. His, his voice to sing, you know, it's, it's kind of in my range. So. Yeah, I'll try and make a nap for that yeah, too. Yeah, great. great. Cool. Well, thanks for being on Musicians yeah. in Bars. Thanks for having me. It's been a very interesting episode. Thanks, well, thank Mike. you. It's been a pleasure having you. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot.